Act Two of Treasure Island, a play in four acts by Jules Eckert Goodman. Act Two, Scene One: The Key at Bristol. The entire back of stage is taken up with a sailing vessel tied to her pier. Upon her side there is painted her name, Hispaniola. A gangplank comes from the ship's side down to the wharf. At right, some dusty old buildings line the side down right intermediate, where there is a small inn with a sign of a spyglass hanging from above the door. There is a bench in front of this inn, and from its window hangs a cage with a parrot. The left side is taken up with a large warehouse, down to left intermediate, where there is the entrance to a street. The center of the stage is taken up with barrels and coils of rope and boxes. When the curtain rises, three or four men, each with a box or a barrel upon his shoulders, are starting for the ship from the wharf. They go up the gangplank upon the ship, and then vanish from sight. Then the stage is deserted. From his cage the parrot calls, Pieces of eight! Stand by to go about! Pieces of eight! Finally there comes hurriedly in from left intermediate, Black Dog, followed by a man. Black Dog goes to the inn door at right intermediate, and peers in. Within, men can be seen drinking, at times bits of song come out, a roistering scene. Fruit Girl, down left, seated. Black Dog enters from street up left, goes to window, turns from door to his companion see that man in there with one leg hopping about on a crutch yes you go up to him quiet like and say silver there's a man out there as would like to talk to you as the man starts in quiet like remember the man goes in black dog gazes through the window for a moment then he goes up to the ship and stares at her from within the inn there comes sound of songs and ribaldry at last silver appears at the door left who's looking for long john silver black dog turns black dog a nice turn you did me leaving me there at the cove and a nice turn you all did me with your bungling you and pew and the rest of you letting a fortune slip through your fingers points inside the inn where the men are singing Look at him there! All you're good for is to come wine into silver and drink his grog. Easy there, Long John. Well, it's so, isn't it? Isn't it? Black Dog comes up confidentially, as if having something to tell. When we all ran from that place, I got lost in the fog. Looks about cautiously. Well? Well, I must have run in a circle, for I landed up again where I started. The inn? Black Dog goes to him center, nods. It was dark, and I crept up to the windy. Yes. There was Billy Bones a dead upon the floor, and at a table, three of em pawing over a chart. Flint's fist. Flint's fist. Three of em, you say? One was a boy. He'd got the chart and given it to the men. And the men? One they called Doctor. And the other, the other? He was older, and looked your country gentleman. His name? It was Squire. Squire something, or... Squire Trelawney? Black Dog astonished. The very same. Ha! I guessed it! I guessed it! But... Silver points to Hispaniola. See that boat? That belongs to Squire Trelawney. As Black Dog starts... And she's sailing on sealed orders then you know the squire and i have already passed the time of day i've been watching him i've been wondering what this is all about with sudden change that's why i have all the men in there now any of them see you down at the cove none but the boy and he saw only pew and me good confidentially they haven't shipped their crew yet i'm going to try to make our friends here take us to flint's treasure in their own ship i even find the treasure for us and then what then sinister then we'll pay him for it trelawney and smollett appear upon the ship silver points them out to black dog turns him around either one of those your squire ay the old man 
Go inside. You'll find all the men there, but not a word. Black Dog goes into the inn. Silver wanders up the quay as Smollett and the squire come down from the boat. I will try, sir, but they are not so easy to get. My dear Captain Smollett, there must be plenty of men. But your requirements are peculiar, sir. What, merely men? Not afraid of anything on sea or land? Surely, sir, English manhood has not gone back so far that the spirit of adventure is lost. All oh, very well, sir. But asking your pardon, I don't know the nature of this voyage. And are not to. Sealed orders, sir. Quite right. But you must realize this makes it difficult to get men. Honest men. It shouldn't. England has stood for centuries for her sailors to unknown lands, and on unknown seas, her drakes and raleighs, and hawks, and— Very well, sir. I'll do the best I can. Starts away up left. Squire follows him up. And make haste, Captain. My friends come within three days. I must be ready then. I'll try, sir. He goes off left up stage. The squire is going toward the vessel when Silver puts himself in his way. Silver, left center, indicates ship. I never tire of looking at her, sir. Pretty, isn't she? Never saw a sweeter little craft. Squire, indicates Silver's loss of leg. Not a seafaring man? I lost that, sir, in defense of my country. Squire, drawing nearer, interested. Did you now? Ay, sir, under the immortal hawks what not really a fact sir pensioned of course no sir never asked it never needed it i keep spyglass there still you should have your reward i have sir salutes in england my country god bless her squire enthusiastically a fine spirit the true spirit of an englishman there's only one thing my health's not been good ashore Having been to sea so long, that's why I keep my inn here on the quay, where I can get a bit of salt air and meet seafaring men. Why, every sailor as comes to port knows Long John Silver. Do they now? They're all welcome, sir, whether they can pay or no, because of my love of her out there. See. The squire Trelawney starts rather surprised at Silver. I tell you, when the sea once get into you, sir, it's hard to ever lose her. It may sound queer to you, sir, but it's a fact. Squire, studying Silver. No. No, I think I understand. When I think of the times I've seen dirty weather and clear fights at close quarters, hand to hand and cutlass against cutlass, against pirate and buccaneer. Squire starts, but Silver hurries on. And then I think to me in there doling out grog, and sir, it's like torture. When I come out here and see a trim little schooner like that assailing, well, I'd give my life, sir, for just one more chance at the old sea. Squire, who has been thinking and studying Silver, you say you know every seafaring man in Bristol? Aye, sir, they all come to the spyglass. Well, suppose, just suppose now, I wanted a special sort of crew, men not only sailors, but fighters, perhaps. Silver points to inn. There are men in there now, enough to man this boat, men who have sailed as I have sailed, against Flint himself. Silver's parrot begins to squawk. Excuse me, sir, that's my parrot. I call him Captain Flint. That's why I piped up when he heard the name. You mean to say you have sailed against Flint? It's to him I owe the loss of this. Indicates leg. You see, sir, that's what makes it so hard, to have been through all that and to sit idle and hear the sea calling, begging for a chance, sir, a chance that means life, sir. Suppose now you were offered that chance. You don't mean it, sir. You could help me get together a crew? Yes, sir. At once. I'll see to everything, sir. As the squire starts, Silver goes on quickly. But there are honest men in there, Englishmen, ready for any purpose. I like your talk, sir. You're engaged. Oh, thank you, sir. And now about a crew. My captain has found difficulty. Might I ask, sir, what sort of voyage this is to be? Why? So I may judge about the men. I want tough men, such as you just spoke of. Men willing to board Flint himself. I know the very men for you. They're in there now. You go to your cabin and I'll send them to you. Very well. If I could get them before Captain Smollett returns? I'm sure you can. I'll show him. He with his trouble about getting honest men. 
Send them along, Silver. Starts up boat. Yes, sir, at once, sir. And I want to thank you, sir. Squire goes up on ship. Not at all. Glad we met, Silver. It's a great thing for me, sir, a great thing. The squire disappears in the schooner. Silver's manner changes at once. Heaven has sent him to me. He hastens to the door of the inn and calls, Hands, Arrow, Morgan, Anderson, Mary, all you men. They all come out. Black Dog, next to Silver. Was I right? It's Flint's treasuries after all right. Hands makes movement toward ship. There is a slight change of manner. I'm to engage his crew. There is much astonishment and guffawing among the crew at this. Easy. There, you are to be that crew. You are to go to him now. You, Arrow, are to be mate. Aye, Captain. Anderson Coxswain. Coxswain, is it? Mary, you, Boatswain. My old job. The rest do you as he pleases. He's waiting in his cabin for you. Go now, quick. Act natural, nothing suspicious. As they start away. Look innocent and fierce. On with you. They start to leave when Silver holds back Black Dog, who crosses last. Wait. Well? He might recognize you. I told you I saw only the boy. We'll take no chances. You'll stay hidden in there till we sail. As Black Dog makes a gesture of protest, he pushes him toward the inn door. We've got him baited, and we'll get him, hook and all. He shoves Black Dog into the inn, and then he goes quickly up on the ship. Peace is right. Peace is right. Curtain. Act Two, Scene Two. The key at Bristol. The Hispaniola ready to sail. When the curtain rises, there is a string of men going between the ship and wharf, carrying boxes and barrels upon their shoulders. The pirate crew. Upon the side of the ship, there stands Israel hands with bosun's whistle, as if directing the men. A little farther away stands Captain Smollett, watching. As the men work, some sing a rude sea song, but not the fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Others are shouting and talking excitedly. About the whole scene there is an air of excitement and noise. Hands, as the last man comes up the plank. At all? Anderson, comes aboard with a box. Aye, aye, sir. That's all of it. Hands turns to Smollett and salutes. Captain Smollett. Smollett, upper deck. Well, Mr. Hands. Everything right, sir. Sure you've missed nothing? Sure, sir. All ready to cast off? All, sir. All ready. Shall I give the word, sir? Black Dog enters. Squire Trelawney is not here yet. Have all the men stand by. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Hands. Yes, sir. Smollett, with change. Who gave you the orders for the stowing of those stores? I thought you did, sir. Smollett, dismissing him. Very well. Aye, aye, sir. Goes out. For a moment Smollett stands as if thinking, and then he turns as if to follow hands. Meanwhile Black Dog has sneaked upon the scene and is slinking up the gangplank when Smollett turns and sees him. Well, my man. Who are you? Black Dog on gangplank. A, uh, a friend of the crew, sir. I have a message. This boat is ready to sail. No one boards her now. But, sir, it's important. Most important I see him. Who? Silver, sir. Long John Silver. Smollett calls. Silver? John Silver? Silver without i sir man to see you silver coming coming sir coming what is it sir sees black dog and starts this fellow here says he has a message for you silver recovering himself and feigning surprise a message for me my good man ay silver noticing that smollett is watching and that black dog is growing embarrassed well well speak up my man Black Dog indicates in. There's someone there as would like to talk to you. He said it was important. Silver to Smollett. I don't know who it could be, nor what he wants. Can I go ashore, sir? We're all ready to cast off. I won't be but a jiffy, sir. Very well. 
goes out. Thank you, sir. Comes down with Black Dog and turns fiercely upon him left. By all the powers, what you trying to do? That boat's sailing. Well? It'll never sail without me. If I don't go, I'll blow up the whole thing. As Silver starts to threaten him. I will. I'm going. You hear? You'll do as I say. Hands comes rushing down. Silver crosses to Gangplank. How now, Hands? That Captain Smollett. What's he done? He's down below, snooping around. You put the powder where I told you. Aye. And their men bunked with ours? Aye. Did he notice it? I don't know. He acts suspicious like. Silver turns angrily on Black Dog. You hear that, Black Dog? You hear? Now you go inside there and wait. Go, I say, or by thunder I'll run you through. Black Dog driven to the inn door. You'll never go without me. Never. Go. Black Dog goes in. Silver storms. Luck never came with that man. Suddenly. Hands, Black Dog doesn't go on this cruise. Aye, aye. Silver, as Squire and Dr. Livesey come from street, left upstage. Go inside there. Watch him. Don't leave him out of your sight and wait your chance. And when you get it, you know what to do. Stiletto bus. Hands goes in as Dr. Livesey and Squire come down. Aye, aye, sir. Exits into door of inn. I don't know what to make of it. I am sure he'll come, Squire. Silver comes forward. Everything ready and ship shape. Just waiting for you, sir. Squire Trelawney, testily. Hawkins hasn't come. You told him you might stay till the last minute with his mother. If we wait, we'll miss the tide. That means another twelve hours delay, sir. Look at her there. Everything ready? And to be held up now. By gad, it's hard, sir. Would you mind if I took my old shipmate, Captain Flint, with us? He goes on all my voyages with me. Starts away and then stops. Oh, perhaps you gentlemen would join us, and a glass of grog, or... Thank you, Silver. But if you'll excuse me? Certainly, sir. I understand, sir. Goes in. An honest fellow, and capable. Well, Squire, I don't usually put much faith in your discoveries, but John Silver suits me. Start for boat. That man's a perfect trump. We've grown quite familiar. Squire, you haven't told him anything. Not a word. I have been most discreet. On the contrary, I've got all his little secrets from him. As they start for the boat, he leaves a wife to manage his inn. Indeed. A lady of color. No. They laugh and go up into the boat. Enter Jim, left up stage with bundle, goes to inn and knocks. Well, my lad? Silver, Mr. Silver, I'm looking for... That's my name, lad, and who may you be? Hand Silver a letter, sent her. Hawkins, sir. Oh, I see. You are our new cabin boy. Pleased I am to see you. We've been waiting for you. There is a sound of commotion within the inn. Oh, sir, what's that? Silver puts Jim behind him, trying to cover the noise. Oh, that that's nothing, lad. Just some men drinking there in my house. I think it's a fight. Black Dog, pursued by hands, appears at the door. I know my rights, and you can't stop me. I'd fight the whole crew of you. Exit left upstage. Jim suddenly recognizes Black Dog, cries out, points excitedly to Black Dog. Why, it's Black Dog! Stop him, sir, stop him! Hands, after that man, quick! Hands rushes out, left. It was Black Dog, I'm sure of it. I don't care two coppers who he is. He hasn't paid a score. What did you say his name was? Black what? Black Dog, sir. Hasn't Mr. Trelawney told you of the buccaneers? What? He was one of them, sir. So? One of those swabs? In my house? As Hands returns, comes on from street, left up stage. Well? He got away, sir. You know who that was, Hands? No, sir. Black Dog. Isn't it so, Hawkins? Yes, sir. And do you know who Black Dog is? No, sir. One of Flint's crew. As Hans starts. Now, Hans, you was drinking with him in there. Aye, that's who you've let go. Now board with you and be a little more particular who you can sort with hereafter. Hans exits ship. Now see here, Hawkins, this is a blessed hard thing on a man like me. There's Squire Trelawney. What's he to think? 
Here I have this confounded son of a Dutchman sitting in my own house, drinking my own rum. Here you comes and tells me of it plain, and I let him give us a slip before my blessed deadlines. It wasn't your fault. Nay, that it wasn't, but it might look so. I'll explain it to the squire. Will you now? Just as soon as I see them. No, no, lad. You wait till we sail, and then when he sees how I work and knows me better, then you ups and tells him, and he'll understand. Very well, sir. There's a lad for you, and— Stops suddenly and breaks out into a laugh. Why, what a precious old sea-calf I am. What is it, sir? That swab got away without paying his score. Three goes of rum. Shiver my timbers if I hadn't forgotten my score. Falls on a bench laughing. Tash my buttons, but that's a good one about my score. As they laugh, Squire and Dr. Livesey come down from ship. Jim, my lad, we've been anxious about you. Where have you been? It was mother kept me, sir. She's so afraid, and she's quite alone. I sent her a boy to take your place. Yes, sir, and very kind it was, only he can't take my place, sir. That's conceit for you, squire. Oh, no, no, sir. You see, there's just mother and me now, and we've never been parted before. Doctor L comes up and pets Jim. There, there, Jim. I understand, of course. Silver significantly to the squire begging your pardon sir don't you think it might be good if i took him on board sir oh i'm all right sir i'm all right silver crosses right to jim come with me lad silver will show you your quarters leads him up gangplank and now the ship's company is complete and captain smollett comes hurrying down well sir all ready to sail we mustn't miss this tide sir squire trelawney I don't like this cruise, and I don't like my crew. Eh? I was engaged to sail this ship under sealed orders. Right. Then if that is so, how is it that every man before the mast knows more than I do? Squire. That's not true. I learn we are going after treasure. Now, treasure is ticklish work, and I don't like the treasure voyages on any account— but when they're secret, and the secret's been blabbed— Blabbed? Yes, sir, blabbed. Why, sir, it's life or death and a close run. If you're afraid— Doctor holding back Squire. Squire. To Smollett. You say you don't like the crew. Aren't they good seamen? Squire crosses right to Apple Stand. I dare him to deny that. Six of the men I chose were discharged— they were fresh water swabs. Silver showed me that. Crosses to box, sits. And do you think it fair that this silver, the ship's cook, should have had more authority than I in choosing my own crew? It was a chance to get men quickly. A slur on me, sir. Doctor, as Squire is about to reply, Captain Smollett, just what are you aiming at? Come. You gentlemen know the risks you're running. We do. And you are determined to go. We are. Then I have this to say. Without my orders, those men put all the powder and arms in the forehold. There's a place under our cabin. Why not put them there? But— Doctor— Stopping the squire. All right, Captain. What else? You have some of your people with you. You don't doubt them, too. Berth them beside the cabin. Doctor, intercepting the squire as he again starts to answer. Go on, Captain Smollett. I've heard you have a certain chart, that there are crosses on that chart. Squire rises, startled. I never told that to a soul. Every man aboard knows it, sir. Then, Livesey, it must have been you. I don't know who has this chart, and I don't want to know, but I insist it be kept secret. In short, you fear a mutiny. I deny your right, sir, to put those words into my mouth. No captain would be justified in going to sea if he had grounds to say that. What then? Some of these men may be honest. Perhaps all are. But I am responsible for the ship's safety and the life of every man jack aboard her, and I demand that I be allowed to take these precautions, or I resign. Well, then, you can. 
Wait, I agree with Captain Smollett. I think it wise to do as Captain Smollett says. Very well, then. I am overruled. Turns to Captain. But let me tell you, I think the worse of you, Captain Smollett. But do as you wish. Thank you, sir. As soon as we are under way, I'll give orders for the removal of the arms from the forehold. Captain goes to his position on the boat. Squire, as he and Dr. Livesey follow, I should have sent him packing. Squire, I think you have two honest men aboard, Captain Smollett and John Silver. Bows and ahoy! Bows and blows. Pipe all hands. Enter crew. Aye, aye, sir. Doesn't it set you all a tingle, Livesey? Top man aloft. Aye, aye, sir. Squire, coming up to top of gangplank. Off at last, Livesey. Loose the top gallant. Aye, aye, sir. Seaward ho! Hang the treasure. Doctor, at foot of gangplank. Squire. Squire. It's the glory of the sea that's turned my head. Dr. Livesey and Squire go on ship. Cast off your gangplank. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. All on your main sheet. Aye, aye, sir. Crew does so and starts to sing fifteen men. Black Dog enters from street and sneaks aboard. Squire has gone up on bridge. Jim. Jim. Is Jim aboard? Jim dashes out from among the pirates. Here, doctor. Cast off your hawser forward. We're starting, sir. We're starting. Jim turns towards pirates. Livesey. Doctor goes to Squire. Jim turns from pirates. That was the song the captain used to sing. The pirate's song. Bustle until curtain. Act two, scene three. The Hispaniola at anchor close to Treasure Island. The part of ship shown is some of the stern and most of the amidships, the main part of the stage being taken up with what is called the waist of the ship. Upon the right, however, there is seen a small portion of the poop, with small brass cannon mounted upon it. In the background there can be seen a vague outline of Treasure Island, with Spyglass Mountain glowing in the moonlight. When the curtain rises, the men are discovered in with Trelawney, Smollett, and Dr. Livesey. Others of the men are along the rail, some even in the rigging. Smollett, on upper deck and using his hands as megaphone. All fast there, forward! Folding up chart, etc. All fast, sir. Anchorage good? Aye, aye, sir. The current's pretty strong here. How's she holding? Firm in over seven fathoms, sir. She isn't dragging an inch. Good. Turns to crew in waist. My lads, that island there is the place we've been sailing to. Murmurs of satisfaction among crew, etc. Squire Trelawney has a word to say. Captain Smollett has told me how every man of you has done his duty alow and aloft, as I never asked to see it better done. And so, to show my appreciation, I have had Silver here make ready a special mess, and double grog below decks. As the crew gives a shout, My lads, I hold this handsome, and if you think as I do, you'll give a good sea cheer for Squire Trelawney. As the crew cheer, Come now below, and we'll drink a health to these gentlemen. Below! I'll go off with talking and gesticulating left. Well, Captain Smollett, you'll admit now you were wrong. How so, sir? A splendid voyage, a fine brisk crew, and here we are. Aye, sir, here we are, but we're not home again. By heavens, there's no pleasing you. I'm going below. As he goes out right, A trifle more of that man and I should explode. Smollett, to Dr. Livesey. Yes, sir. Have you seen nothing suspicious? Yes, much. Then... I believe you're right. I tell you, this crew is on the verge of mutiny, and... Stops short as he sees hands come from men's quarters. What is it, Mr. Hands? Some of the men didn't report to mess, sir. Just looking for him, sir. As Smollett watches him keenly... I haven't seen him about deck, sir, have you? Not a soul, Hands. Thank you, sir. Exits to upper deck, where he continues his search. 
now and then looking surreptitiously at Dr. Livesey and Smollett, who watch him. His actions are suspicious. You see that? There's something in the air. We'll hear from that crew before the night's over. I believe you're right. Then we must take some precautions, squire or no squire. Come below. We must make the squire listen to reason. They go out. They have scarcely gone when Black Dog steals in left. He makes over toward the cabin when he is met by Hans, who comes from upper deck. Where are you going? Down to that cabin. And if I find that boy... You're not. You're going below. Stand out of my way. You heard Silver's orders. Aye. I've heard his orders. And I've heard his talk and... Hands whistles. So, you've signaled for him. Shiver my timbers, but you'll pay for that. Springs at Hands, and they struggle pantingly without words. As they do so, Jim, who has been in the rigging, but up so high that he is out of sight, now comes slowly down. It is evident that he has heard, and now he watches the fight. He comes slyly down, and is making toward the cabin, as if to go tell the captain, when he is startled by someone approaching. In fright he turns to hide. He sees the apple barrel, and jumps into it as Mary comes rushing in mary trying to separate the men here black dog hands silver and the rest of the men come rushing on deck what's all this put up those knives i found these two trying to carve each other up the men are pulled apart i caught him making for the cabin silver to black dog you heard my orders the men are back of me in this are they well who's captain here i'd like to know by thunder i'll show you the whole pack of you give me that knife give it to me black dog gives up his knife and silver turns to hands here hands i place him in your charge at the first word the first sign you kill him understand kill him black dog as he goes off with hands i'll pay you for this long john if he touches me i'll tear him to pieces out left silver turns to the men who are in groups john john we want to wait indicates cabin and the men look stealthily to see if any one is about all clear others murmur the same or no one here etc now then out with it we men want to know how long we're going to hold off by the powers till the last minute i can manage as the men make an angry start they've got that chart and until we have it we make no move and didn't we see it this very night here in their hands if you had let us at them then and you think they'll sit still and let you cut their throats while doing it, eh? We're nineteen to six, and... We've taken a vote. Oh, have you now? We know our rights, Long John. Another word, George Mary, and... Foxel Council, Long John. Them's rules. Rules! Rules, is it? I'll show you rules. You'll have all the rules you want. Sounds of fighting in Foxel. Stops suddenly. What's that? It's hands and black dog. Stop him. Stop him quick. Below with you all. Quick, here comes the doctor. If the squire hears that rumpus, will be ditched. Quick, don't let them see anything. As the men rush out, Dr. Livesey and Squire and Smollett come in. What was that noise, Silver? Noise, sir? I didn't notice anything. If there's anything wrong, I'll soon settle it. You can trust me, sir. Goes out quickly. Of course I trust you. It's only ridiculous trouble-seekers that do not. It's... You're wrong, sir. Turns to Dr. Livesey. Oh, sir, I've been in there, and I heard. It's mutiny, sir. And talk about treasure and falling on us to get our charts, sir. What's that? Yes, it's Silver, sir. He's a seafaring man with one leg that sailed with Flint. They're pirates. Flint's crew. They know what we're after. And they've used us to get their ship and sail it for them to the very treasure place. That's it. That explains everything. Turns on Squire. Squire, you trusted Silver? I did. And Silver got it from you. Are you convinced now, Squire? Captain, you were right. I was wrong. I own myself an ass and await orders. Captain, to Jim. Did you hear anything of their plans? They're arguing down there now. The men are all for attack. But Silver's all for holding them back. If he only... If he only could. How many men can we count on? They said they were nineteen to six. Six. That must be... Redruth? 
joyce hunter and ourselves then there are some who are doubtful well count on six ammunition and arms with us by gad if silver can only hold them off if we can get a little time this ship needs water without it she can't sail now according to your chart there is just one place on that island where water can be had the stockade now if we can make the stockade with our arms and provisions by heaven sir they'd have to come to us if we could only hold them off for a time joyce rushes in how now joyce joyce by door begging your pardon sir but there's things come over that crew go on first they tried to make red ruth and hunter and me join em and when we refused they shut themselves in a corner by themselves well i stole back and listened it's all about a chart sir and they're coming to demand it good lord silver's been trying to hold em back sir but i'm afraid if they don't get it sir why it's mutiny sir and death what shall we do captain smollett i beg your pardon sir you say it's time you want yes yes well then why not give them the map sir what they think the map that captain smollett has to sail the ship by is the right one couldn't we give them that jim i think you've hit it turns to squire that map you gave me was a true one except for the crosses where the treasure is buried it was jim you'll find that chart down in my cabin take it put some crosses on it put them anywhere understand yes sir then bring it up here and slip it into the squire's hand hurry jim rushes out i believe the lad has sold it captain turns to dr livesey and squire now in case this comes to an issue are you gentlemen willing to fight them to the last sir aye sir very well have your pistols primed they are sir and mine sir joyce as soon as those men come from below take all the muskets and load them drag as much powder and shot into the cabin as you can very well sir stand there on guard let no one touch it right sir if it comes to a fight we'll fight back to the cabin and the ammunition we've got a chance gentlemen just a bare chance and if we don't make it we'll sell our lives dear steady now steady all the pirates led by silver come forward in an angry group silver however is apparently trying to cover his face somewhat well my men this looks like a deputation it is sir a deputation well what is it these men sir these men sir have been hearing rumours 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 sir as how this ship was under sealed orders and them sealed orders are treasure sir aye aye, aye, aye. Treasure. treasure and who told you that you did sir i i sir now such things getting to the ears of the men makes them sort of greedy sir and do you mean to say that this is mutiny you can call it what you want sir why damn me i'll have you put in irons i'll silver as the men with ugly threats go towards smollett speaks to squire i think you'd better know sir i've counselled peace and fair terms well silver to squire always we are told that you have a certain chart the crew draws nearer in a threatening manner with certain crosses on it we want that chart silver i trusted you the chart sir do we get it do we smollett as squire goes to answer wait suppose we give this chart to you what then what then ay what then what happens to us why why nothing sir you mean you'll not harm us no your solemn promise solemn promise smollett to the men you you men you hear you give your word to cries of ay ay very well then much as i think you are a pack of scoundrels and hope to see you all hanged the men come threateningly at him why i know when i'm beaten squire get the chart very well silver as squire starts out wait i'll send a man with you no need jim yes sir you know where that chart is jim yes sir bring it here in a jiffy sir silver as the men press forward now then ready with the boats men quick get them ready 
as men get to work lowering the boats. I'll stand guard and watch, for I tell you I can't trust you, Captain Smollett. Smollett down left. Well, I can't say as I trust you either, Silver. As Jim comes in with chart, Silver rushes forward. Wait. Remember your promise. Aye. Then let them have it, Jim. As Jim gives Silver the map, all the men with a cry spring forward. Now then, pals, settle with them. Back, back. Squire and Dr. Livesey and Smollett all draw their guns. Your promise. By heavens, gentlemen, if you come a step further. Silver turns to the men. Stop, stop, I say, you fools, you blockheads. Well, haven't we got the chart? That was Flint's crew. I've seen Flint's ship of muck with blood and fit to sink with gold. Aye, gold that's buried there, gold that's ours by rights, belongs to us who have sailed with Flint. Flint was captain, you may as well know. I was quartermaster. As he sees the men again threatening, he goes closer to Smollett and speaks low. They're rough lot there. It's all I can do to hold them. You'd better go below. Quick! Go! I warn you. Go. As soon as Smollett and Squire and Doctor go, the men all make a dash as if they would follow them. Now then, men, after them, we'll finish this up. Wait. Haven't we got the chart, haven't we? Yes, and we got it too easy. Too easy? It don't look natural. There's something behind it. A trick. Maybe a wrong chart. Then we'll find out soon enough. Come, lads, come. Starts right, all. Jim, stepping forward left. Wait. The men, surprised, stop. It was the chart I got from Billy Bones. I brought it from the captain's cabin. I ought to know whether it's the right one. You go down there and attack and you'll lose everything. They're waiting for you. Their muskets and pistols primed. They've got all the guns and ammunition. You go and you'll lose your ship, your chart, and your lives. You say this is the right chart? We'll let you risk your life on it. I mean, we'll take you along as a hostage. As Jim starts. That makes a start, eh? Recovering himself. I'm willing to go. All right, we'll see. Hands. Aye, aye, sir. Hans and O'Brien come forward. Hans, you and O'Brien stay here to watch the ship. First sign of anything, you fire and tell the squire from me that shot from this boat will be a signal for Hawkins' death. And tell the squire from me that Jim Hawkins isn't afraid. In with him. Toss him in. As they toss him in. Now then, over with you all. As the men scramble on the boats. Push them off. Gets over the side and can be heard calling. Away with them. There are shouts and cries as the men push off. Hans and O'Brien crowd the rail, staring after the boats. Then slowly and cautiously, with muskets raised, there come upon the deck Squire, Smollett, Dr. Livesey, Red Ruth, Hunter, and Joyce and Gray. When Hans and O'Brien turn, they confront the muskets. Up with your hands! Up with them! What's this? Joyce, take away their guns. Joyce going to men and taking guns. Right, sir. Hands, starting to lower his hands. But Up with them, I say. Now I warn you, you fire. You just fire one shot, and it means the death of Hawkins. What's that? They've taken him with them. I was to tell you that the first shot from this boat is a signal for death. What? Come, Livesey, to the boat. Where are you going? Going? By all the stars, we're going to rescue that boy. You men did just what we wanted you to. We've tricked you, and we're going to fight you to the end. And I tell you this much, and you can tell Silver. God help you all if anything happens to that boy. Curtain End of Act Two